This is Harold S. Reed Jr. and welcome to another episode of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day. Hey guys, this is Harold S. Reed Jr. here, also known as HRJR, your motivational coach. If you don't know what motive action means, motive plus action equals results and results equals success. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for listening. Thanks for staying tuned. Uh, before I get into today's podcast, uh, know that you can follow me on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash HRJR Enterprises. Also on Twitter, at The Ice Talks. Today I want to talk to you about the difference between entrepreneurship and having a job. And actually it's not a difference. There are several differences. And today's podcast, the topic for today's podcast was suggested by my brother Maurice Jordan. So, generally, we tell our children, as we were told as children, that our pretty much pretty much our goal should be go to school, get a good education, so you can get a good job. Now, what happens after that? Because see, there once was a time where you could go to school, get a good education, get a good job. You could work that job for 20 plus years, 20, 20 plus years. And then after putting in those years of taking care of the job, the job would take care of you in the form of a pension. There's the old time tradition uh, when you retire, they give you a gold watch and they send you out into the world to live the rest of your life in what was supposed to be relative comfort, knowing that, you know, you got a paycheck for the rest of your life for all the time that you put in. Now, those days, for the most part, are very much long gone, (laughs) all right? But before we get into why that is, let's tackle this first uh, piece of it. Go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job. This is by far one of the most dangerous lessons you could ever teach a child because what you're doing is... Go to school, that's good. Get a good education, that's good. Get a good job, there in which lies a problem. Because what you are doing is you are preparing your child or your children to improve themselves so that they can be of value to someone else. How about go to school, get a good education so you can make your way in the world? How about go to school, get a good education so you can acquire the tools that you need to create your own business so you can chart your own course and you can be the architect of your own destiny. Yeah, that's a lot of words. There's a lot more than get a good job, but there's also a lot more meaning than just get a good job because as I said, with a good job, you are basically adding value to someone else's bottom line and the person whose bottom line you're adding value to is the person who went to school, got a good education, and uh, set their own course. And then you got people who may not have even gone to school. They might have learned a trade and been able to do well at it. But without getting too deep into that, the important thing I want to talk about here is, again, the differences between entrepreneurship and just holding down a job. And I came to discover this difference myself in my own journey when I first read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Now, I don't follow Mr. Kiyosaki much anymore because, quite frankly, I'm not in tune with his political views. But with re- and you follow somebody as long as you can, as long as you can rock with them. But when they reach a point where you can't rock with them no more, keep it moving. But I cannot take away the credit that I I give this man for setting me on the course that has pretty much put me where I am today. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I learned a great many things. One of the first things I learned is that, and what he teaches, is that you will never be financially secure, let alone financially independent, um, on a nine to five, okay? One of the other things I learned is that you can pretty much chart your own course if you can find a void, find a need, 
and create or improve a product or service that will fill that need. Then what you can do is you, because you created or improved that product or service, you can put your own label on, excuse me, your own price on it. You can determine the value of that thing. You can determine your own value. But people don't realize this because we're too busy telling our children, we were too, and our parents and our elders were too busy telling us, go to school, get a good education so you can get a good job. See, that sets you up to not know what your own value is because when you get a good job or when you get any job, you have somebody else telling you what they're going to pay you for your time, for your labor, for your effort, for your blood, sweat, and tears. They are going to put their own price tag on it. Now, you may like that price tag. For example, when I became a police officer, I wasn't necessarily happy with my, my initial salary. It went up, so that was cool. But, you know, I tend to think that my my life is priceless and I, I was I was doing a job that any given day, like I say, any given day, I I kiss my wife and kids goodbye. I could have been really kissing them goodbye. So you can't put a price on that. But when I moved from my initial department to the department I retired from, the price that they put on it was 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 very good. I was I'm, I'm very much able to take care of my family. And quite frankly. Here's the funny thing. I retired with a pension, you know, so but again, those days are for most jobs. Those days are long gone. And even in government jobs, they're moving away from the pension. Some of them are moving away from the pension system and going into 401ks and other type of investment vehicles. So your best bet is going to be hard. Let me be clear about that. But your best bet is become an entrepreneur. Start your own business, all right? Now, I'm not going to get all into how I personally feel about multi-level marketing and direct sales and network sales and all that, network marketing and what have you, but there are people who are doing that job, who are in that profession, who are in that industry, who are making money and who are doing honest work. Um, And I'll leave it at that because that's just one avenue. But what I will say is that the best thing you can do is find something that you're passionate about and and determine if it's something that you would want to monetize if you love it enough to do it and do it and get paid for it. Something Les Brown says, the beautiful thing about being a professional and I'm paraphrasing is that when you love what you, you do what you love and you love it so much but you're so good at it that people you would do it for free but you do it so well that people will pay you for it. I'm living proof of that, all right? Also, what I, something I mentioned before with regards to adding your own value or naming your own value. When my wife started her photography business, her very first client, they, you know, they asked her how much uh, would she charge them for the pictures that she had. And she, she didn't know what to charge. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't have uh, any idea what, what to charge them. She didn't know how much was, is too much or how much is not enough or what have you. And I asked her, what is your time worth? What is your time worth? And she said, I don't understand. I said, well, how long did it take you to edit and put those pictures together? She said about eight to 10 hours. I said, well, you create a dollar amount in your mind. You create a dollar amount and you multiply it, you take one of those eight to 10 hours and you put that dollar amount on that hour and then you multiply that dollar amount by eight to 10 or however many hours you want to solidify, all right? And it's just that simple. You can create your own dollar value. When you go to the supermarket, somebody created that value. And guess what? That you're paying more than what that item is worth. When you go to the clothing store, when you go to Best Buy, when you go to the furniture store, wherever you go, whatever you're paying for, You're not paying the actual cost. You're paying a ridiculously marked up cost. Why do you think people can put things on sale? And even when things are put on sale, you think they're not still making a profit off of it? But the fact of the matter is, if you own, you can determine the value. Owners determine value. Entrepreneurs are owners. They take the risks, so they reap the rewards. Now, being an employee... You don't have as much risk. You do have a little bit more security, all right? Because you know you go to work Monday through Friday for two weeks. At the end of that second week, you're going to get a paycheck for those two weeks. 
But at any given time, if that owner decides to sell a business or if that owner decides to downsize, depending on where you fit in on the food chain, you might find yourself coming into work today uh, or any given day and, and be given your notice. That in two weeks notice you won't be here anymore. All right. So I would recommend. And this goes to everyone listening. I would recommend take take value, take stock, excuse me, take stock of your life. Take stock of the things that you enjoy doing and ask yourself, is there a way you can monetize it? Listen, there are people who are making millions, literally millions of dollars posting goofy videos on YouTube. There are people who are making millions of dollars, getting hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of product uh, from, from doing makeup tutorials. Uh, there are people who are uh, being endorsed by video game companies because they're professional video game competitors and they do reviews of the video games that they're playing and they sit there and record themselves playing the video game and they're making a boatload of money doing it. So don't tell me you can't think of something that you're involved in or something that you enjoy doing that you cannot monetize. Perfect example. Uh, I put my son in the martial arts uh, um, a little under two years ago. I got involved myself. Now, most people go into a karate school. They take some lessons and they get bored and they move on. No, I put myself in a position where I'm actually inside the business learning the business because this is the business I want to put my son in. This is the business. Right now, he's having fun, but there's going to come a time when his responsibilities will increase and he will learn more, and he will do more, and I'm setting him up so that by the time he comes out of school, while his classmates and his friends and his partners and his buddies are running around shuffling out resumes trying to look for a job, he will be positioned to have the knowledge to open up a business right then and there, and I'm going to be there to help him do it. See, so I'm not telling my child, go to school, get a good education, you get a good job. I'm telling my child, as I recommend you tell your children, go to school, get a good education so you can gather the tools necessary to create your own business. So you can name your own hours. You can determine when you wake up, how late you stay up, how early you wake up, how how early you want to go to bed, how late you want to go to bed, when you want to go on vacation. All these things entrepreneurs and business owners get to do. It wasn't until I retired that I could say, I don't feel like waking up. (laughs) I don't feel, you know, or I don't feel like going to sleep yet, you know. So when you're an entrepreneur, again, I'll say this again because this is very important. I don't want to bypass this because I'm going to wrap this up in a minute or so. All right. As an entrepreneur, understand that there is risk. Whatever it is that you want to do, there is risk. All right. Zuckerberg took risks. Dell took, uh, excuse me, Bill Gates took risks. Risks. All right. Uh, the lady, the lady who, who started Mrs. Fields cookies in her kitchen took risks. All right. You name it. Somebody who's out there making a boatload of money or billionaire status or what have you. At some point in time, they had to take some risk. At some point in time, they had to jump off that cliff. Now, there's an old saying that goes, sometimes you have to have enough faith to take a leap off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. And people do that. People just Jump off the cliff because I'm going to be this. I'm going to be that. And that's all well and good. Here's what I add to that question. <clears throat> it's all good. You want to jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. But what if you don't know how to make wings? Mm, how do you fly? All right. So with that said, go to school, get a good education, gather the tools necessary so that you can find and discover what it is that you love to do and monetize it for the benefit of yourself, your soul, your family, and your future. With that said, and I may touch more on this in another podcast because there's so many different nuggets to unpack with this topic alone, but I'm going to wrap this up right now. Uh, To my brother Maurice, I thank you for this topic, and I think we're definitely going to touch on this in a future podcast. Hey, thank you for listening to the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day.